Hello there, and welcome to this video about dwarfs. Uh, I was going to wait until the book came out, but um, it comes out in a fortnight, and other people have already done videos and stuff. So I thought I'd spend a bit of time lifting the pages from the potato cam footage. I have emailed GW about getting access. I'd rather have the digital one, though, because, like, you know, the potato cam... St anyway, whatever. Well, so we've got three sub-factions. It says we've got two, there's three. Um, uh, two dwarves. There's uh, three new special characters. Um, there's too much choice for me. I don't know. I wanted to get dwarves. Now I don't know because I don't know which way I want to go. Uh, some more new units, which are pretty cool. Are they any good? Is the question really that I think you know anybody anybody really cares about? Um, oh, how do I advance the slide? Okay, so here we've got three new characters. Actually, uh, a skip ahead. I want to talk about the. Uh, as is usual, I tend to start off by talking about like the the sub factions and special rules, and then go sort of a bit, so go surface and then go deeper. So you've got a choice between the royal clan and the expeditionary um, force. The royal clan has to have a king. It's unlimited on the number of kings it uh, kings or thanes it can take, which is quite interesting. So you could have like a real sort of character heavy build if you wanted to. Um, you're allowed one anvil of Dune or Rune Lord per 1,000 points, and you're allowed Runesmiths. There's no engineers. No engineers in the Royal Clan. Um, you've got to spend 25% uh, on these new Royal Clan warriors, or Longbeards or Quarrelers. Um, I think Longbeards was already was already a thing for Dwarves. I should really just get the, get the book up for the good guys, shouldn't I? That would... Uh, uh, probably help things a little bit, so we could compare and contrast. Uh, right, so if I do that, yeah, there we go. So there's kind of the difference. The Anvil of Doom or Rune Lords the same. Um, oh, they've lost uh, Demon Slayers and Dragon Slayers. So there's uh, there's no Slayers in the Royal Clan. If you take the the Slayer special hero, then there is, but there isn't in a normal Royal Clan. Um, yeah, Quarrelers and Thunderers. So instead of Dwarf Warriors, you've got Royal Clan Warriors. We'll do it side by side in a bit. Um, up to 50% could be spent on um, Hammerers. Hammerers are unlimited, as you can see the normal Dwarf and Mounted holds. They're limited to one unit of Hammerers per King or Thane. Uh, there's no restriction on the Royal Clan. Um, I mean, yeah, you've got to have a King or Thane, but you could have loads of units of Hammerers. Um, you're allowed to take Dwarf Carts. Uh, and you're allowed the same, I think it's the same three, no, no, we're missing cannons, so they're not allowed cannons. Um, and rare are rangers, um, iron breakers, and iron drakes. Now, iron breakers are normally special in normal dwarf and mountain holds, so they become rare in a royal clan. Um, and I think that's because, um, no, I don't know why that is, to be honest, I don't know why. And again, they're not allowed slayers or anything. Um, and they're allowed some mercenaries, uh, which include Doom Seekers and Goblin Hewer and, you know, Imperial Dwarf mercenaries. Oh, pardon me. So I was at rugby last night and got an exertion headache, so I'm a bit kind of drowsy today. Um, anyway, so that's the Royal Clan. What's it get? What's its special rules? Well, it gets this rule like when it charges or makes a follow up. Uh, the unit gets plus one strength, which I don't know. The jury's out on whether that's good. I mean, it's obviously good to get plus one strength. They're, they're almost certainly never making a charge because they're dwarves. Uh, however, uh, they will at some point be making a follow up move. So, getting plus one strength when you're already like on the. Um, I think actually that rule will really help because what we've seen in the meta is that dwarves really struggle with. Um, dominating games you know what they tend to do is kind of get close to a draw they're not very good at just absolutely smashing the opposition so actually when they're starting to batter you down them getting that plus one strength modifier could make a massive difference so I think the, that will allow dwarves to potentially push forwards to getting a, a better levels of victories um, character models may spend an additional 25 points on runes uh, and standards, um, standard runes, they can get an extra 25 points. 
They've put, with the exception of Royal Clown Warriors, who already have the bonus included on their profile. Why not just, like... Unless the restrict... Is it 25 points? Is it 25 points? That's the, that's the, that's the question, I guess, isn't it? Uh, no, for 75 points. Why not just make them 50, and then you don't have to say that? Like... <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's the wrong one. Um, and... They're allowed to pick a single enemy character uh, to go in the Book of Grudges, and everybody hates it. Um, and you get a bonus 75 points if the nominated character is slain. Um, has fled the battlefield or is fleeing. So you'd probably pick like a low level something or other that you can pretty much guarantee killing because it's an extra 75 victory points, and the hatred's nice. Um, you're probably not going to pick your opponent's massive mega killy dragon thing because it might not die. Um, although, to be honest, if you're going to focus two or three turns of firepower on killing like a Chaos Lord on a dragon anyway, that might be the general. You know, why not? Rerolls to hit in combat can't hurt, can they? So, well, in the first round anyway. So so that's the, the other cool thing is that you're allowed to upgrade a Thane or a Runesmith. To a BSB, so you can have a Runesmith BSB. I think that's one of the strongest things about. Well, it's one of the strong things about the Mortuary Cult for Tomb Kings is that they can have um, a Lich Priest as a BSB. I think allowing uh, a Runesmith to be BSB is quite is quite interesting. So you get a BSB that does other things other than sort of floats around with a battle standard. Um, so that's pretty cool. Oh, oh me right. Sorry, tea's important. Expeditionary Force. So the Expeditionary Force, um, again, I'll bring back that so we can do a bit of a side-by-side. -side. So there's no kings or things. You've got to have an engineer or an engineer sapper. An engineer sapper is a new thing. You're allowed demon slayers or dragon slayers, just the one uh, in the entire army. And then you've got Thanes and Runesmiths for the rest of your points. So it's basically Engineers, Thanes, Runesmiths, you know, and one Slayer, maybe. Um, now, with the Slayer runes, there's a whole load of reasons why you might actually want to include that one Slayer. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. But there's... So, if, well, there's there's one rune, basically, that m means that the Slayer... Uh, you, you, you own, you, your opponent doesn't get victory points for it unless it's still alive and on the table. So actually, you know, taking a distraction slayer uh, to sort of stick in the middle of the table that your opponents kind of got to deal with. And when they deal with it, they're effectively handing you victory points. It's pretty cool. Because um, you could sink like quite a lot of points into that into that unit that essentially is you banking them. Um and you know, there's always the off chance that it might kill your opponent's Chaos Lord on Dragon for instance. Um, so, Warriors, Thunderers, Dwarf dwarf Carts are cool, uh, which is interesting. Dwarf Carts, I'm not sure on, to be honest. Um, comment down below if you have a... <laughs> anyway, Rangers um, become 0 to 1 per 1,000, whereas in the normal list, it's 0 to 1 just uh, in core. The rest are uh, rare. Uh, you're allowed to scout gyrocopters as core per thousand. Then you're allowed to scout gyrocopters as uh, as special. Um, you can't buy rangers other than core, so you know that's that. Um, you've got miners, scout gyrocopters, gyrocopters. Uh, you have the, the same three war machines as normal. The same two rare war machines as normal. Uh, slayers become rare instead of special, and you only have one unit. And then you've got your old the old jar of bombers and again this this one has the cool thing that an engineer can become a bsb so you can have like a battle standard bearer that does things so that's pretty cool as well um a unit of thunderers may be upgraded to expeditionary marksman for one point and they don't they, they don't they don't suffer any negative to hit for moving and shooting remembering of course that uh, handguns are cumbersome so they're normally minus two to hit for move and shoot so that's really really good for an extra point definitely you'd want to do that any engineer can be upgraded to an expeditionary marksman for 10 points um you probably want to do that as well because again it's 10 points for 
essentially a BS5 um, handgun shop, which is pretty good. And there's a load of engineering rooms that make your handguns even better, which we'll talk about in a second, so you probably want to do that. Um, function over form is a really cool rule. So you can reduce the toughness of your war machines, typically from 7 to 6. Um, but that means that they lose the move or shoot special rule, which means you can move your artillery around and still fire it as normal, which I think is really, really good. Um, yeah, especially especially with stuff like organ guns, which, are, you know, 24-inch range isn't that short, but it's relatively short to other weapons. So you're essentially extending that range to 27 inches, which is pretty good. And, of course, you know, you can edge back from stuff as well. So that's really, really mobile artillery is really good. Um, and then you've got subterranean ambush, which is basically miners can like pop up later and although those mine markers, but you can't put them in your opponent's deployment zone. So I'd say they're of limited benefit. I think the problem there is that that, that they're miners and miners are rubbish. So you know. That's that's limited benefit, but having a small unit of stuff. I mean, if you wanted to have a go with it and tell me how it how it works, that would be that'd be cool. But um, I, you know, I personally, I don't see that as being that good. Um, but I guess like little units of miners popping up and causing problems later on could be could swing a battle. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. And then the the third sub faction that they've introduced is Ungrim Iron Fist, and they've introduced it through his special rule, King of the Slayer Hold. So if you take him in a royal clan army, you can take Demon Slayers and Dragon Slayers unlimited as character choices. You can take a unit of slayers per thousand points as core, and you can take naught to four Doom Seekers per thousand points as special. Uh So, you can already take Goblin Heroes as mercenaries. Uh, you can take, essentially, because of like the rule of three at tournaments, you can take your three Doom Seekers as special, and then you can take a couple of units of um, Slayers as core. So you could have an entirely Slayer Keep, Slayer-based uh, army if you really wanted. You might not want, though, because Ungrim's other rule is um, here, that if he joins a unit of Hammerers, they get immune to psychology and unbreakable whilst he's with the unit. Remember, hammerers have that rule that they they all basically act as unit champions for challenges. So he doesn't have to take a challenge against something that's likely to kill him. He's hella tough. Toughness six is great. Um, he does actually have an armor save. He's got a four up armor save because Slayer Crown improves our armor value by two, um, and he's got uh, light armor for some reason. Um, whatever. Um, so he's got a four up armor save, which is pretty good for a toughness six. He's only got three wounds, but he's got a five up ward because of the Slayer Crown. So he's pretty, pretty. He's a pretty defensible boy. Uh, and then he's got the Axe of Dargo, which is uh, strength six, beer sickler, and uh, AP three, which is pretty good. And it's got the Monster Slayer rule. So you know, there's four attacks, six is to wound, blah blah blah. Um. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty good. Um, his main thing really is to turn an army into a slayer army. Uh, weapon skill nine is excellent. It's like one of the highest in the game. I think I think it's only the bloodthirster that's weapon skill ten. Well, really, could be wrong. Um, oh yeah, and he's got the slayer rule, so he always wounds on like a four up. Oh, he's strength six, so there's not going to be a lot that that applies to but um, but the axe of dargo is not a it's not a great weapon so he doesn't have to strike last so he's pretty cool oh yeah and he's got magic resistance too so you stick him in the unit and obviously they get magic resistance too as well so yeah and he's got the death blow rule um which is pretty good and the grom roll armor rule which means he gets to what is it re-roll ones arm saves of one maybe against non-magical i can't remember So he's a pretty defensible boy. The other special character that kind of does fit in it, although Thor Groom can go in any Dwarf and Mountain Hold army, um, he does kind of fit in a um, a royal clan. Uh, does he? Yeah, he probably does. Uh, 
Because can you get... Is it possible to... Oh, for goodness sakes. Why do things never work when you want them to? Right. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, I think the strat with him, right, Thorgrim, is... So he's got this grudge... Um, sorry, the grudge stone ability. Which means, during any start of turn subphase, he can set the grudge stone. Once set, Thorgrim and his unit are unbreakable. Automatically pass any panic tests. However, they can't flee or move, other than to give ground... Oh, make a, sorry, make a follow-up or reform. So, you know, all that's pretty good. You could get a massive unit of hammerers, like, I don't know, about a thousand points of hammerers, uh, and make a huge blob of hammerers, stick Thorgrim in it with a BSB. They can't really be challenged out. And just essentially make the most painful line hammer experience possible. Like a kind of a a two by a two by you know whatever forty or something, and um, just rep it out basically, and just see if your opponent can uh, can deal with that because I don't think there's many many forces that could really deal with that many um, hammer attacks really. Uh, yeah, um, it's pretty pretty horrible. So, uh, and also, you'd, you'd have to kill that unit in order to win the battle. So, that would force your opponent to charge the unit. And you could give the like the unit of hammerers, like, I could give it the rune of hesitation. And you could give the BSP the rune of confusion. So, you know, they don't get to use lances. They don't get initiative bonuses on a charge. And then they've got loads of hammerers to deal with. Unbreakable hammerers with Thorgrim and blah, blah, blah. So, that's a viable strat, I think. Um... Uh, it's a very trolly and very sort of dwarfy, but, you know, pretty cool. He's also got this armour of Skaldur, which is heavy armour. Um, that's it. He's got a shield as well, so he's got a four-up save, so he's not, he's not terrible. And he's got Gromril armour again. Um, yeah. Uh, he's also got a four at ward against killing blow attacks or multiple wound whatever attacks, but that's the only thing he's got a four at ward against. Um, but you could, you know, with your BSB, you could load it up with the banner of, uh, you know, five at warding. So he's got a five at warding built, you know, when he goes in the unit. And then he's got his axe, which is master rune of smiting uh, and rune of parrying. Uh, I forget what master rune of smiting does. Is it another AP or something, or is it like... Holy shit. Master Rune of Smiting, that's the one that's uh, multiple wounds D6. So he's got Strength 6, AP 1, Armor Bane 1, multiple wounds D6. He's a pretty tough boy. Um, Thorgrim Ulixon. Um, this is, you know, this is Thorgrim, but a sort of young version of Thorgrim. And he's sat on a stone this time rather than a big, you know, anvil -y sort of throne, grudge throne thing. Uh, and then the final special character that they've given to us is uh, Burlock Daminson. Not to be confused with um, Thingy Burlockson, uh, who's Burlock's son, who's around during the End Times Crisis. Different special engineer, but uh, Burlock Daminson's like a renowned, like invented gyrocopters, I think, or something like that. I don't know. Somebody else knows the law better than I do, so that they can correct in the comments. Um, but he's got the same sort of rules as an engineer. He's got the prepared positions thing, which you know you you in, you entrench something. The, his really cool rules. He's got range finding optics, which basically moves the uh, removes the penalty for uh, long range. Which, remember, you know, you can upgrade a unit of handgunners to be move and shoot. So they can, you can move and shoot with handgunners and ignore the, the range modifier with one unit. If you stick Burlock in it. Um, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, do you get, with the, ex, with the uh, where is it? Expositionary force. Do we get... Ah, oh, that's annoying. Mm 
Mm. Okay, that's the that's that's the cool thing about the internal balance that they've done. So you don't get um you don't get troll hammers, torpedoes and um oh, what are they called? Iron 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 drakes. Um in there. Uh, he's also got this furnace hammer which uh he he's got three attacks in combat, so he's not terrible in combat. His strength in combat is the uh is the roll of an artillery dice, which I think is super cool. And then he's got this rivet gun thing, uh which is a bit like a it's a sort of a pistol thing. Uh but it does D three hits, so it's kinda of like a mortar slash pistol thing. It's pretty cool. Strength three AP two armor bane one is is not terrible. Um, you know, for 85 points, he's really good. And he's also got the, you know, he can't be targeted while he's within um, three inches of a, of a war machine. Uh, you know, whether he's in front or behind or whatever. So that's great. Um, so he's he's pretty cool. I'd have liked him to have the 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 other rule that... That... Um, um, that... Um, that... Um, sappers have got as well because that would that would have been a bit bit cool just for him for him to have uh like utilities like wider utility but anyway Ugh, i hate these potato cam things um right so we've got some runic tattoos and we've got some engineering rooms um runic tattoos uh, can be so doom seekers can have three demon slayers can have two dragon slayers can have one um These are a bit like the rules. These are not not they're a bit they're not like the rules, but like law wise, they're a bit like um, fire slayers. They get like runic tattoos hammered into them or something like that. Um, anyway, the cool one is rune of the dishonored, so which is for demon slayers and dragon slayers only, which basically turns them into a mega doom seeker. So they get a three up ward when they're on their last wound, which is great. Um, and uh, if it's alive at the end of the battle, uh, your opponent gets the victory points. If it's dead, then they don't. So if you think about, like, uh, oh, why did that work a while ago and not now? So if you think, like, where are we? Demon Slayer. So Demon Slayer here is 130 points. You know, you can give it... Um, if it's in a Slayer keep list, so it'll be in like a, a Royal Host list, so it gets an extra 25%. So you can give it weapon runes of 125, or actually, how does that work when people are allowed two different classes of rune? May spend an additional 25 points on runes. So it doesn't say what runes. So conceivably, you could take talisman runes of up to 50 points. I presume you can pick. Don't know. Uh, so a demon slayer could have 100 points of weapon runes, 50 points of talisman runes, and then they're allowed... Uh, how many points are they allowed? Does it actually say? Or is it just like a limit of how many runes you're allowed? Oops. It doesn't actually say, does it? Huh. What about the Doom Seekers? It says they can take weapon runes up to 50. Oh, wow. So they can also take... So they can take weapon runes and they can take up to... Th Wowie, wow, wow. I'm leaning more towards Slayers now. Um, so yeah, so you could give you, so you could give your, uh, you could give your Demon Slayer 130 points, you could give it a great weapon, stick 100 points of weapon runes on it, so that's 230, stick 50 points of talisman runes on it, 280, stick this rune of the Dishonored on it, and you've got 330 points uh, on a character that if it's dead, you get, <laughs> your opponent doesn't get the victory points for it. Uh, and then you've got Doom, Rune, the Doom Seekers, right? Who, uh, if they're in a royal house, remember they can take an extra 25 points of runes. So that's like 125 points 
plus uh, three of these. No two characters can have the same combination. Oh, that's fine. Because um, you could give it, yeah, probably. So, how many points were we up to there? Sorry, I've just just lost track. It takes 50, 125, probably like another 60, so 185 times, you're getting on for like 200, so you're getting on for like 550 points. For, so essentially, oh my God, so essentially you've got like 900 points of dwarves uh, across four models, four slayer models that you want to die by the end of the game and that if they do all die, you've limited your opponent to 1,100 victory points. That's insanely good. That is really good. From from a competitive perspective, that's really difficult for your opponent to deal with because all of these little dwarf units are really tough in combat. Um, they're relatively straightforward to kill because, like, toughness five, no armor save, no, no ward save. Although, you know, the talisman runes, you could give it a ward save, um, you know, because that, that is the... Uh, oh, I've gone too far. Oh, not the first time I've been accused of that. Uh, Talisman runes. Um, where is it? Um, I guess you give it two runes of warding, and then. Oh, is the, oh, the ward save one, that's on, that's an armor rune, isn't it? Yeah, rune of shielding is an armor rune, so you can't take a ward save. Interesting. But you could take uh, a couple of runes of warding, a rune of passage, and a, oh, no, you can only take three, can't you? That's inter That'll be difficult to build out and maximize that fully, but you're probably looking at spending, I don't know, 750 points on stuff that you want to die. Um, and again, that will then limit your opponent's score to 1250. That's pretty. That's pretty useful from a from a competitive perspective. Um, Rune of Endless Battle is pretty cool. That's a bit like the Bone Giant. So um, if it does some damage, it keeps going. Um, Yeah, Rune of the Hateful, Hate Everything is pretty good. Rune of Grit is pretty good as well. Uh, but actually, you could do that twice. You could take two, because it says, it just says, no two characters can have the same. So you could have one with, the, so you could have one Demon Slayer with the Rune of the Dishonored and the Rune of the Reckless, and then one with the Rune of the Dishonored and, I don't know, Rune of grit to make it toughness six or something i mean so you could do that twice couldn't you so yeah you're looking at like essentially restricting your opponent to a thousand victory points as long as they don't kill your really horrible stuff mm, that presents a really difficult challenge for your opponent like because it's it because it, it's a kill points game but they can't kill these things but they kind of have to because it's these things that are in the way behind the other stuff so that's a, that's a really interesting challenge. I'm not sure how good it is, but anyway, that's that's. Uh, and we'll finish off by talking about the other two Slayer bits because we seem to be talking about Slayers because that's the thing that excites me the most at the moment. Um, Goblin Heroes are 120 points, so they cost the same as an eye uh, as um as a cannon organ organ gun. Um, so 120 points. Uh, they. Uh, they've got 36 inch range which is decently long you roll an artillery dice and that's the number of shots if you get a misfire you roll on a uh, misfire chart um, uh, it says roll immediately on the appropriate misfire chart um that it doesn't say what the appropriate misfire chart is, though. I don't think. No. Stone throw. Oh, it says there. Stone throw misfire table. All right. Which is the same as the black powder misfire table, by the way. But anyway, whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, so essentially, it's, uh, it's artillery dice number of shots plus D3 per rank. So even if there's only one rank, you get artillery dice plus D3. And that's the number of shots, however. So you've still got to roll to hit. 
Um, it's got move or shoot. Uh, it's got cumbersome. Sorry for hanging on us early. I said I said ponderous, not cumbersome. It's got cumbersome uh, strength four. So it's basically just a load of like handgun hits, effectively. Um, really good at killing goblins, unsurprisingly. Um, it's a pretty decent uh, thing, and you can give it engineering runes. So essentially, you can build in for the price of an engineering rune one like re-roll um, artillery dice roll per game. Uh, which is pretty good, and uh, you probably want to do that just because you don't want it to blow up on the first turn and just waste its value. Um, and then you got these Doom Seekers. You know, we, we touched on them briefly, but essentially you got 50 points per Doom Seeker. You can give them weapon runes of up to 50, 75 if they're in the Royal Host, and then you can give them a few of those uh, other runes. I thought, yeah, that's just so good. Anyway. Um, yeah, so they've got that the same rule so as the as the uh, the rune of abandonment or whatever it was. Um, so at the end of the battle, a doom seeker that's been slain is worth no victory points. However, if the enemy is, is still alive, enemy player wins a number of bonus equal to one hundred percent of its points. So essentially, your opponent only gets the victory points for it if it's alive. Uh, it's toughness four and two wounds, so actually they're relatively easy to get killed off, and they've got absolutely no, really no save whatsoever. So, but they do do quite a lot of damage. They've got a decent amount of impact ticks. They get plus three to their charge distance uh, uh, and range. Um, so they've got two d three attacks, which is a decent number of attacks and uh, impact hits. They've only got hand weapons, which actually is pretty good because they've got grom rule weapons. So essentially. Grumwell weapons allow uh, are just AP one, I think. Um, so uh, that that that's pretty useful because Grumwell weapons only applies to like a single hand weapon. So yeah, these are these are pretty excellent to be honest. Um, they're unbreakable. They've got a vanguard move, so you can get them going. I mean, it's only three inches, but still, it's three inches. Every little helps. Uh, and they've got the Slayer rule, so it always wounds on a four up or, you know, better. <sighs> Sorry, um, need tea. So that's your Doom Seekers, and that's all your Slayer stuff, really. Um, Doom Seekers can be taken as mercenaries uh, for Empire as well, so it's a strat for Empire. But they are they are subject to. It's a strat for Dwarven Mountain Holds as well, because you can take them as mercenaries for normal dwarves as well, which is which is pretty good. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, the other thing with the Goblin Heat here. Sorry, I should have. Um, pointed you at the box at the bottom basically if you've got a slayer in a normal dwarf mountain if you've got a normal dwarf list and it's got a slayer hero then you can take uh, one of these per thousand points as a rare uh you just need one to unlock them though um cool yeah and these tattoos and stuff and weapon runes they're there, yeah, any any dwarf can have them. So you, you could take that. Hmm, you could do that in a normal dwarf mountain holds list, couldn't you? You might want to do. Oh, I don't know. It's difficult to write a list with this new. I've been thinking about lots of lists recently, and I can't really. I mean, I'm getting into the same problems that I did with with green skins, and I can't really, I can't really, I can't really have the list that I want. <laughs> um. Because with orcs and goblins, I just want like I want a load of wizardy mounted things and a load of orc ball boys, and you can't really do that because ball boys are only cool if you've got like an orc boss, I think, or something, or something like that. Um, right, let's have a look at the expeditionary force stuff, and then we'll round off with all the other royal host things. So engine, so we've got engineer sappers. They're new. Let's have a look at them. They're more expensive than engineers. They're arguably better though. So we'll have a look at those in a sec. We'll have a look at the weapon rooms. Um, and uh, yeah, they're allowed dwarf carts as well, aren't they? And then we'll have a look at carts and then sort of circle back. Oh yeah, and scout gyrocopters. I forgot about them. Right. So let's have a look at the sappers and the scout. So sappers are seventy points. 
Uh, a normal engineer, I think, is 50 or 45, something like that. Same profile, so it's, it is an engineer. It's got more or less the same options. However, rather than it being able to like put barricades up and around a war machine to make it minus one to hit in shooting, at the start of the game, uh, this can entrench units uh, during a game. So it takes a leadership test at leadership nine. The character and the unit they've joined become entrenched, which means they con they are behind partial cover, so minus one to hit, and be defended by a low linear obstacle, so essentially disrupted charge. So opponents charging into the unit that's that, 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 that's now this is fantastic for combat units because you know the master rune of confusion i think it is that makes you make a disordered charge um that uh, costs something like 35 45 points something like that um i don't know why i'm guessing i've got the actual book like i'm nearly on the page as well wrong way 50-50 chance. Uh, disorder charge costs 35 points. There you go. So the 35 points, you get that for a leadership test. So that's really, 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 really good. And in addition, it's not just that, but they're minus one to hit in shooting as well. So, you know, the, there's no restriction on what that unit has to be. The only restriction really is that you can only take it in an expeditionary force. So in terms of combat stuff, you're limited to warriors, thunderers. You're limited to warriors. Uh, at, now, that said, rangers are no slouch in combat, but they're not hammerers and they're not iron breakers. So what you can really... You could use it on mercenaries, arguably. So we'll have a look at that in a sec. Um, yeah, arguably that's quite good. Uh, but anyway, that's a, that's a fantastic ability. Um, Yeah. Oh, yeah. And also, any enemy model that ends its movement within command range of one or more characters with this special rule that aren't fleeing must make a dangerous terrain check. So, not only does your opponent make a disordered charge against your your unit, which probably gets to stand and shoot, especially if it's like thunderers. You know, uh, I think they've got dwarf crafted and uh, yeah, and all sorts. So. Yeah, so anyway, then they've got to take dangerous terrain tests. So that makes your these these swappers make your units super 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 defensible. Um so they're really 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 good. Um So uh see what I mean about it is really difficult to choose which way to go because I like the idea of a load of psychopathic red-haired dudes, you know, on a on a quest to die. But then I also like the idea of like a really gun heavy gun line dwarf army. So, you know, it's really, really difficult. I don't know which way to go. I think you've got scout gyrocopters. So they're different to normal gyrocopters. Firstly, they've lost the bomb ability. Secondly, their fly is 10 inches instead of 9, so they're slightly quicker. <coughs> Thirdly, they all come with clatter guns. Um, which arguably are the better guns because they've got move and shoot. Move and shoot means march and shoot, so they always get to shoot. And this time around, they've got ballistic skill four, whereas like your, your normal gyrocopter has only got ballistic skill three. Additionally, uh, the normal gyrocopter uh, has more toughness and a better save, so you sort of that's a bit of your trade off. Um, the other, I mean, so. The gyrocopter of the classic gun is 70 points, so it's 10 points cheaper. Um, they've only got heavy armor instead of full plate. Uh, the, they, they are allowed on a unit, and they do have extended formation. The scout gyrocopters don't, even though they are in a unit. It's more or less the same problem. Um, same impact hit, same strength. You know, both monstrous cavalry, technically. Um, scout gyrocopters have got magic res 1. Gyrocopters haven't. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, and scout gyrocopters, if they win a round of combat, they can fall back in good order rather than make a follow-up or pursuit roof. Um, they may choose to, so they don't have to take a, a, um, a leadership test to do that. It's only if they want to, like, stand and reform that they need to take a leadership test, so they can just choose to hit and run. Uh, if they win a round of combat. So, that arguably makes them better at, like, war machine hunters, which means that essentially, you know, if the combat's not going so well, you know, they've technically won. 
or they need to get out and shoot or whatever. Um, although, actually, even if you do wipe out your opponent, rather than, you know, follow up, you can just fall back in good order and get somewhere that's a bit more helpful. <clears throat> and like I said, Ballistic Skill 4, I think, is really good for a unit that's more or less always going to be at minus one to hit because of multiple shots. Uh, but not necessarily at long range, because you've got like a 20-inch move, so like at short range, you're a 32-inch threat range. So then you, you, you know, you're doing D6 shots at, at hitting on probably fours, uh, whereas these are doing D6 hot shots probably hitting on fives. So, you know, arguably quite a bit better. However, is it worth the toughness and the armor save, you know? Uh, you decide. I mean, if I was going to write a list, I'd probably have two gyrocopters and two scouts. Um, yeah, let's have a chat quickly about uh, the weapon rooms, the engineers' weapon rooms. So these can go on crossbows or handguns. Uh, and again, remember, you for an extra ten points, you can remove long range uh, for your for your um, engineers. Yes, so that works on crossbows as well. Right, so you can have um, Master Rune of Slaying, which if you're shooting a behemoth, it always wounds on a 3-up and gains multiple wounds D3. So that's pretty useful for, you know, either a handgun or a, or a crossbow, although probably a handgun, really. Um, you can have the Master Rune of Piercing, which is plus one strength. And it shoots like a bolt thrower, so you can have like a strength five bolt throwing handgun, which is pretty cool. Or just you can imagine it, a dwarf just carrying a basically a, a bolt thrower. Um, or you can have a hit doing two d three hits, which I think is excellent for like a again, well excellent for either really, uh, and also pretty cool. You can make a, a unit that all you have to do is... So Rune of Concussive Force, I think, is one of the strongest ones because you can turn a unit stupid. Um, so if you've got multiple engineers with multiple handguns, you can turn many of their units stupid. So for just 30 points, I think that's excellent. Um, the others are a bit cheaper and do sort of cheaper effects, but I think Concussive Force is amazing. And... Rune of Piercing, I think for 40 points. I mean, you could just buy a Bolt Thrower for 40 points, though, and have this doing something else. So, well, actually, no, you couldn't. Bolt Thrower is a 75. But still, you, you, you see my point. Like, 40 points is a, is a lot for... Um, is it, though? Actually, I've said that. This is what I thought previously, but now I'm saying it out loud rather than in my head. Yeah, I don't know. I think it might be worth it, actually. Because especially with, like, um, a sapper. Sapper, yeah, sappers are ballistic skill 5. They can be in the front lines. Or you could put them a sapper on a flank. Strength 5, like, handgun thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, I'm going towards engineers now. <laughs> this is what happens every time I read it. I look at the slayers and think, oh, slayers. And then I look at engineers and I think, oh, blow stuff up. And then I think... I don't know what to buy now. Um, cool. And then we've got... So we've got some dwarf carts to talk about, which I don't think are very good, and these stuff. So let's talk about the carts first. I think my, my opinion is probably going to be controversial because people seem to like them. I think they're rubbish. It's toughness five, three wounds. It's a light chariot. It does some impact hits, whatever. That's not its job. Its job is to go around and give everything plus one move. So if it's Bugman's cart, it's got beer in it and it makes it gives them plus one move. So they get turned up to movement four. I still think that's crap. I don't think that's going to make any difference. Um, it might make a difference with uh, like an expeditionary force because remember you can now move artillery, uh, which, you know, plus one move on your artillery could be quite useful uh, to add an extra inch. But really... It's just an extra inch. Uh, or you could have a minus cart, uh, which means dwarf units within it can stand and shoot as if they're equipped with blasting charges. So what do blasting charges do? They're the ones that miners have. And blasting charges, everybody gets a strength 3 quick shot. So strength 3, AP 1, armor, bane 1, you know, attack. But like... 
how useful is that really? I don't know. I don't know. Um, considering you're probably already going to have rangers. Do you know what I mean? And if you've got rangers and you've given them uh, throwing axes. Oh, which aren't in this book, are they? They're in the... Um, the rule book. Uh, what am I looking for? That's about here, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Come along now. Oh no, idiot. They're shooting weapons, aren't they? So they, they're missile weapons. Here we go. Throw, that's pistols. And then we've got crossbows. And then throwing axes. So, you know, if you give them, if you give rangers throwing axes, you know, they're hitting on threes, strength three, two shots, or strength four AP one. I mean, I guess maybe the minus cart might be worth it. And it could explode. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I'd... I really don't know whether it's any good or not, to be honest. I think for 65 points, like, you can get an Engineer Sapper for that. And an Engineer Sapper, like, has obvious tangible benefits, whereas this one, it's like, yeah, I'm not so sure. It feels like, yeah, you might be spending 150 points to make a unit of Thunderers, like, do something decent. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then you got these two guys. So the Royal Clan Warriors are essentially the replacement for Dwarf Warriors. So let's uh, do a side-by-side -side with them. So the Royal Clan Warriors... Oh, oops. So Royal Clan Warriors are instead of uh, Dwarf Warriors. So they cost two points more. Uh, same basic profile. They have hand weapons, shields and armor. Heavy armor. So Dwarf Warriors don't come with shields. So they've already paid one point for the shield. Uh, they can have uh, veteran, standard bearer, musician for an extra six points. Each, so they play, pay one more point. They can take Grommer or Great Axes instead of normal Great Axes. And the difference is that Grommer or Great Axes are AP3 instead of AP2. Uh, these guys have Grommer or Armor, which again is reroll ones. And uh, Grom weapons, so single hand weapons are AP1. They hate orcs, and I think everything else is resolute shield. Well, yeah, everything else is the same. It's just they've got the Grom armor and the Grom weapons. So they can have drilled veteran, drilled veteran, stubborn. Uh, no, no, they can ha they can have stubborn. Sorry, whereas dwarf warriors can't. Um, yeah, they are better. They are definitely better. Um, point for point, I think. You know, yeah. Yeah, and they can take uh, they can take standard runes of oh no, it would be the same in a royal clan, wouldn't it? Because dwarf warriors would get an extra twenty five. I mean, dwarf warriors you can't take, but you know you see my point. It's the same. Um, and uh, veteran may take weapon runes, but in the royal clan they can take talisman runes of up to twenty five points as well, uh, which is pretty good because some of them are like magic res or stuff like that. So yeah. I mean, I think they're they're a genuine upgrade. They're pretty good. If you're going to take uh, dwarf warriors in a royal clan, yeah, these are these are nice. Uh, so imperial mercenaries are basically dwarf warriors that you can take in uh, dwarf of mountain holds or empire of man. The cool thing is that you can give them, you know, like handguns, uh, uh, hand weapons, uh, heavy armor. Shield, so you can basically make like heavily armored handgunners, which is pretty cool. Um, and you know, all the cool rules, so they're pretty good. I quite like them because they give you a bit of flexibility. You can do you can do quite a lot with the with the unit if you want. Um, yeah, I think I've pretty much covered everything, haven't I? So there are three, like I said at the, the, the top, there are three sub-factions. There's essentially the Slayer Keep, which involves putting him in a royal... Now, remember as well, the royal clan, this one, plus one modified to strength. Remember, that also applies to, to the Slayer Keep as well, which, you know, is pretty good. Considering your opponent's going to be trying to dodge your Doom Seekers, giving them plus one strength on the charge... Um, 
you know, it's going to make them strength six AP one, which is pretty fantastic. So, um, you know, yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't really know which way to go because, like, the Slayer Keep thing is something that I find really exciting. However, I think the thing that puts me off them is how horrendous the um, the um, goblin here is to put together. <laughs> uh, and paint is so fiddly. Yeah, I think I've talked myself out of Slayers, although I've always wanted a Slayer army. Um, never had one. I did have some dwarves back in the day. What did I have? I had some of the really old 80s dwarves that I found at a car boot. Uh, that I just used to use as dwarf warriors. I had, I just had lots of cannons, I think, if I remember rightly. Was it cannons? Yeah, cannons. I really like cannons. When I was, uh, when I was younger, like sort of 18, 19, I was a massive fan of like Napoleonic period warfare. So like serried ranks of like cannons and handguns and stuff like that. That's exactly what I did with my empire army as well. Just made like a kind of a, um, you know, a sort of, vaguely Napoleonic English Civil War. They're two different things, Dan. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> they were painted like round heads, but it was sort of Napoleonic in my head. And then I had a green troop of that I, that my opponents let me use as skirmishes because um, uh, I had a uh, captain. Oh, oh my God. I've forgotten what the German for sharp is. <laughs> anyway, Captain Sharp. Um, so yeah, I, um, yeah, I was a massive nerd for all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I just like my cannons. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed that cannons aren't like the, 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 the default choice for war machines. I think organ guns really, you have to lean quite heavily into that if you're going to go cannony in, um, for dwarves. Um, but I think the problem is I might actually end up with just like, um, yeah, Sappers, is it only? I suppose the question is: it is only the expeditionary force that can take sappers, isn't it? And I, I think that's the thing because I really want because the rules for sappers are so good. Like you definitely spend two hundred and ten points on them. Um, It's such a difficult one, isn't it? So yeah, so then I don't get to take iron break iron drakes. But iron drakes are probably the best thing in the dwarf roster, like as a standalone unit. Um and they're really nasty. So like because oh. <laughs> like this Royal Clan right, you could take a you could take like a slayer keep with like, I don't know, like I said, about a thousand points of stuff that you know, it doesn't really matter if it dies or not. About 500 points of... Um, uh, uh, slayers for core. Uh, 300 and whatever points it is for um, thingy. Where's he gone? Um, <coughs> Ungrim. 315. He's quite pricey. 315. He's got a good stat line, but it's quite pricey. 315 points for him, and then like 200 points of Iron Drakes, something like that. That'd be that'd be quite effective. Um, yeah, and then you don't have any don't have any Goblin Hewers, but I'd rather have the Iron Drakes than the Goblin Hewers, to be honest. Because, A, they're a bit more manoeuvrable and they're a bit better, I think, on average. Uh, a bit more effective most of the time. Because the thing is, like, even if you roll something like 15 shots, like half of them hit, you know, whatever. Although that is quite good. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, really, because the rumour reel told me that Goblin Hewers were nearly broken. And, like, looking at them, it's like, no, nah, they're not. They're, they're just, like, they're okay. Um, yeah... I think actually I I might just stick to like a normal dwarf and no because I want the sappers. I don't know. I don't know where I stand with dwarves anymore. I think there's so many good lists that you can build out dwarves, but nothing's like got everything I want. And I suppose the the final uh, part of this video, I m might as well say that I think Games Workshop again have done a really good job in like the internal balance. So like when we talk about internal balance and external balance, external balance is like how good are dwarves compared to other factions. 
I'm not sure they've done a very good job of that. We'll have to see what happens when the data starts coming in. It's only my opinion at the moment. And like I always say, almost all opinions are entirely worthless. So, you know, my almost entirely worthless opinion is that dwarves, I think, are still going to struggle a little bit against the current meta. Because the current meta is essentially swift stride and cavalry heavy. And again, there's not a lot in this that allows dwarves to counter that. Um... I do think there's some stuff in the... I do think the Slayer Keep option works because your opponent can really only get a 1,000 victory points off you and you can you can put those annoying pieces that you want to die um, in the way of your opponent getting the juicier charges off. So you can, apart from if your opponent's got a shooting heavy army, you can make sure that you limit your opponent's victory points, and actually those mega horrible slayers might get you the rest over the game. So, but again, I, I don't see them as being able to dominate games. Like you're not going to table your opponent with a slayer keep, right? That's the that's the thing. The engineering force. I mean, again, you're not going to table your opponent with the engineering force because it's not got. It's not got stuff that can chase enemies down all over the table and, like, really kill every last morsel of whatever your opponent's got to offer. Even if you go fairly gyrocopter heavy, they're not that good in combat that they can just, like... They're not that good at shooting as well. Like, even if they're hunting, like, single lone characters, they're going to be probably minus one for moving and shooting. They're probably going to be... Minus one for shooting at a lone skirmisher. So they're going to be hitting on... Even if they're scouts, they're hitting on fives, right? Which, with D6 shots, that's like one or two hits. Maybe one wound. Maybe it goes through. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just not enough to... It's not enough to reliably kill... Um, kill those enemy characters. Unless you take loads and loads of gyrocopters. But then, essentially, you've got no ground forces. And they're easy to kill by cavalry, and they you know they they can't hold their own against cavalry. Like even if you had a unit of six gyrocopters and that got charged by I don't know a unit of five chosen who are um you know a hell of a lot cheaper. You, you know who's going to win that combat, right? So I don't know. It's it's a difficult one. Um, I I still don't see dwarfs as being absolutely dominating. The battlefield, uh, like, apart from in the rarest of conditions. So, external balance-wise, I don't think they've corrected that. However, internal balance-wise, I think they've got it absolutely spot-on in the, you know, internal balance, what that means is you've got, like, all the cool stuff in your head that you want to buy, but the rule books stop you from buying all the cool stuff because you can't take it all together. Um, it doesn't all quite fit in a list, and it doesn't all quite do exactly what you want it to. So you know, yeah, I think it's. I think this is a really good um, arcane journal. I think they've absolutely slapped it. Um, I, but I, I fear that they've not really corrected any of the problems that dwarves have, and that's 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 around either maneuverability or having some reliable mechanic to shut down your opponent's maneuverability. I think the Slayer Keep comes close to that, though, because I think being able to dot individual characters around that you actually kind of want to die just to ensure that you get the charge rather than them, I think that's pretty good. And maybe that's a way of turning off Swift Stride. Maybe. But I don't think it's good. Because the problem is, like, Slayers have got movement three, right? So your maximum charge range is, like, eight. Your opponent, like with a with an over on, is rolling three d six of like ten. So you're going to have to put your like doom seeker and your slayer unit like six inches behind, and then you're going to have to hope to to pray to Betsy that 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 you know when they kill that doom seeker, and they probably will, that they're that they roll really badly for their over on, or else they're just going to slap into your slayers anyway, and they're like, what's the point? You know. Or you put your Slayer in such a way that... But then if they're going to go towards your unit and you put your Slayer there, then they can... Yeah, I just don't... I don't... I just don't see... I don't see the strat. But, you know... Uh, but then again, Engineers might be strong, but again, you can't dominate the battlefield. All you can do is, like, win slightly. And I think that's the problem that Dwarves... 
So now we've got the Arcane Journal. I think the, the, one of the other things that's important to say is this is Dwarves Forever now, right? This is Dwarves that are fixed for at least the next five or six years. This is, this is how Dwarves are going to be. And they still haven't fixed the problem that they can't, like, absolutely dominate the battlefield. If they're rolling well and they're doing well, then there's, there's no, like, reliable mechanic to make sure that they can squeeze, like, a 2,000-point like a victory out of a, out of a table. Like chaos and stuff can because you know we've got these things. We've got knights. They can run around really quick, do tons of damage. You know, hit really hard. Um, you know, kemri has got this thing. You know, uh, which can run around. They've got. They've even got these. You know, which can run around and catch stuff and all the rest. And 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 to an extent, these that can run around and catch stuff and do a load of damage. And dwarves haven't really got that. So. Yeah, but again, in terms of the internal balance, I think GW have hit it absolutely nail on the head. Um, it's it's really good. You've got essentially now four uh, really interesting factions that you can take. You know, you can either take like a, a, a wide-ranging uh, dwarf force, which has, you know, all the, all the different units. You can take a slayer force. You can take a royal host, which is like... Um, uh, Longbeard. To be honest, I think Royal Clan Warriors are better than Longbeards. I'm saying it now. They're better than Longbeards. Um, the, the downsides of the Royal Clan is that they don't seem to appear to believe in black powder, apart from Varian Drakes. <laughs> um, which is weird. But, um, yeah, very traditionalist. Apart from Iron Drakes, in which we will take the you know the latest of all the all the weaponries, but uh, apart from that, <laughs> weird. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, anyway, I think this is. Uh, I think I hope this has been useful. Um, if you uh, if you got any comments, you know, put them down below. Uh, I will. Uh, I've responded to everything. All data is very gladly received. I'm very happy with being uh, proven wrong repeatedly because that means I've learned something and uh, that means I can get better in the future. But um, yeah, if you can, uh, yeah, if you if you've liked the video, there is there is a button for that for that emotional response. Emotional response. Don't know what I'm saying. I'm very tired. Um, might go back to bed. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, subscribe if you like and. Um, don't if you don't want to. I mean, I'm not gonna. Uh, what's the other thing I need to say? Oh yeah, too loo, don't I? But I need to tell the thing. To stop recording. Good night.